Hello everyone for what will be episode 4 of our lore through Horizon Forbidden West in New Game Plus. We left things off yesterday with the rescuing of some miners over here who had experienced a mine collapse and then subsequent flood of their mine due to the uh, the boss back in the town of Chainscrape, Olven being kind of a not-so-savory character. So, we're in the Daunt, and we are beginning to explore some of these side quests before we press towards the embassy between the Karja and the Tanakh that will move our story forward. And so, we'll pick this episode up with taking another look around inside that mine to make sure we didn't miss anything because we were in a hurry to save some lives as the last episode ended and then we'll go from there so just gonna make sure that we're stocked back up on our basic goodies and take a walk back inside there were a couple of boxes in here. I just want to make sure we don't miss any lore tidbits. And yeah, so here we are in the Crimson Narrows. There are a couple question marks, but I don't think they're in the mine. But there certainly is the ability to move around this mine now that the water has been drained out of it. For example, this box over here. I apologize if my voice seems a little bit more stuffy than it did on the prior episodes, just because I have a, um, I don't know, I don't feel like I'm getting a cold or anything, but it's um, it's kind of that morning congestion that you, you get. I'm going to go look around this mine real quick. So this is where we swam up and into to find our miners who needed a rescue. And then we came down this side and swam into here to breach the wall. And these containers have been moved back into place as opposed to staying where we put them, which is interesting. we we'll get them moved out of the way, though. No, we don't really need to back up anymore. We just need to be able to move through there. The boxes are an interesting puzzle mechanic. There's a box up there that I'm not... I don't believe it's worth working for. Neither one of those are going to contain anything that's uniquely special. If there was a lore item up there, I think we'd work for it, but this is more to make sure that we don't miss anything. There's a supply cache that we're not really that hurting for either. Obviously, all these boxes are now part of the, the puzzle to get up there, but I don't think it's critical that we do those things. So, we have to do a few other side quests here, and I think we're, we're actually done here in the mine. So, we'll head our way back out now. And we'll get back on task. So the overarching point right now is that this man Olvind, this boss, this worker's boss back in Chainscrape, is uh, he put these these miners to work in this mine in unsafe conditions. It was told things were unsafe and effectively continued to push and said, you know go do what I'm telling you to do, and didn't really have any regard for the, the safety of the individuals who who are in here, so hopefully we help that man get his due. But let's have a look at what our existing quests are so that we know what else we have to accomplish. I think we are at a point, so we're at to the brink. That's the main quest. We're not there yet. The Bristlebacks, we have to search west of the quarry for the Bristlebacks. A dash of Courage. We're ready to turn that one into Midliff, and so I think we're on this one. We finished Deep Trouble, and we are now looking west of the quarry for the Bristlebacks. So let's have a look on the map to see where the game wants us to go. That's pretty far. That's actually pretty far. Um, so what we will probably do is find Erend, who is here, and then make our way over there. But I guess we're going back to Chainscrape uh, to turn in... Our things to Midlift, the cook, who um, 
we told not to take any crap from anybody yesterday. Or earlier in the day for Aloy, before we came out here to figure out what was going on in the mine. We also have a lore point that we missed, well didn't miss, I neglected to read after I said I would, which we will do when we get back to Chain Scrape. Don't want to be on that. There we go. I wonder, is there a way to see how many champion tokens we have? No, I think we have to see a merchant first because the champion tokens are the the currency that you get as a part of New Game Plus, which will allow you to purchase. The new weapons and we are interested in two weapons specifically and we would very much like to get well we have all of the required materials in Aloy stash that will allow us to upgrade them immediately so we came across the bridge last time we're going to take the the pathless that was not traveled here and come down this slope which i believe is going to put us right smack in the dab of some burrowers but We'll have a, a walk here through the forest. You can hear the snarling of the burrowers off to the side. What is that over there? We didn't exactly explore that as we passed it yesterday. Coming around the mountain. Let's have a let's have a quick a quick gander over there on the side. Across the, the stream here, there is an apparatus. There's a campfire here, so let's have a look on the map where we are. Oh, we because because we took this is actually the the wider path that we didn't take because we crossed the bridges here, so we didn't explore this. Okay, well, we have the campfire unlocked. We'll leave you be for now. I have a funny feeling that we will be coming back through that area at some point. So why are you why would she be coughing there? Oh look a cache. Let's see what's inside of there. It's not like she's walking through the blight. There is a cave here. Coughing a lot, actually. What is in this cave? Sunken cavern, the Daunt East. Greenshine down here. And we'll see if Greenshine is more useful to me in NG Plus than it was in the base game because I didn't feel that many of the weapons that I wanted to use or armors that I wanted to upgrade needed needed Greenshine. Just didn't feel like that there was. I had more Greenshine than I really needed. Another green shine cluster here. Actually, several of them. So we'll pick all this clean just to have this done and on and kind of off the map. Okay, we're right in front of it. Thank you very much. So obviously this is a cavern that in the base game, if you don't have the uh, the mastery breather yet, there's no way that you're going to come in here and 
and be able to hold your breath this long. There's there's no obvious air pockets above. That is a chunk, I think. Yeah, it's a cluster. So it looked like there may have been... Is there anything else in this cavern? No, we came in from the north. You know, the north... The northeast. So that our entry point would be back here. And there's another one over here. Always the trick in these caverns is to find your way back out, and that's not it. That looks like an opening, though. Where does that go? It definitely brings us into something else. So I can tell you, having done some cave diving in my life, scuba diving, that the concept of being in a cave, even with Aloy's idea of unlimited air, is not not scary. It is certainly the sort of thing where you're you're very aware of the fact that this could all come crashing down. Still pinging something here. See, there is an air pocket here. Not much of one, but there is one. That was a very wide open cavern in here. This turned into something much bigger than I thought. I thought it would be basically a two room cavern, as these tend to be. This turned into something very large. Alright, that was the last thing in here in terms of green shine. And we can head out. So we were swimming this way. It's kind of our head out path. We'll see if we can, which way are we going now. We are heading the correct direction. Another box. And two shards doesn't make a green box worth it at this point in Aloy's NG Plus career. We will continue to hit the things we see on the way out here and then get back to Midluff and give him his new cooking pan. I feel like we've come out someplace different. Maybe not. Oh, yes, for sure we have. We have definitely come out someplace other than the way we came in. Top of a cliff. Still on the way back to Chain Scrape, though, just a little bit higher. So there's still the the camp that we came down originally from and past those burrowers, and we're still making our way to Chain Scrape. No, not thinking we need too many rocks here. I think I can climb up this cliff. I wonder if there's anything interesting. We will deal with that down the road. So there is the town of Chainscrape. And we're heading back there to see our friend Midluff. Our new friend, the cook. of chain scraper open to us but before we walk back to midluff i do want to hit this lore piece that we 
neglected to read yesterday. I saw it, and then we got into a conversation with an NPC. There's actually another one here. Actually, this is the one. This is the one we passed. So this says, Hammers for Hire. Scroll. Partially burnt page of an illustrated pamphlet. It's hammering time. Oh no. Whatever will the Hammers for Hire do now that Gunnert has lost all their earnings to devious dicers? Another mercenary job, that's what. In this episode, our heroes delve deep into a mysterious tunnel at the edge of the claim, searching for the Elderman's missing daughter. Inside, they'll find a machine that will give them the fight of their lives. Can they survive the drilling jaws of the ravenous giant? Will they save the missing maiden? Find out in the latest issue of Hammers for Hire, Name Takers and Rock Breakers. So, it's an illustrated pamphlet. So this seems to be like the Osirum version of a comic book. Interesting. So this is where our... I believe that's where our minor friend was laid up. We're going to have a quick glance around and make sure we're not missing anything else here. You've got a face like a thundercloud. Well, that's not a nice thing to say. Oh, I can use your insights later on. So let's walk back over to where Midluff is cooking and finish that conversation with him as we continue to walk around and, you know, steal things from people. <laughs> because the idea that boxes are laying around and that Aloy is permitted to simply walk in and take what she wants has always been a little comical. The ones in the ruins make complete sense. All right, but let's have a look here at you, sir, before we talk to Midlift, because we need to get a, an idea of... Shop looks closed. Yep. Can I still use the workbench? I ain't gonna stop you. All right, so we can't can't talk to this man because of the work stoppage. So we can't see where our uh, progress is with respect to getting to those new weapons. So let's go talk to Midliff. Then we'll go find Aaron, and then we'll go see if we can figure out this whole bristleback situation, which seems to be jamming up the works for quite a few different plot lines here. There he is. <laughs> ah, there you are. I happen to receive another visit from Olven himself. He was pushy, but I stood my ground. And dare I say it, I even got my own back. Yes, I did. I'm listening. When I made his meal, I used three pinches of salt. Instead of two. Uh -huh. Each journey begins with a single step, I guess. I think I have everything you asked for. Then just as you have inspired me, let us see if I can return the favor. Time to cook. Inspired. Next time you want the best provisions, you know where to find me. Your next order of any dish will be on the house. <laughs> Thanks. And don't forget to stand up for yourself. Funny you should say that. As it happens, I'm already cooking up my next portion of resistance. Hope to see you again. Well, Mildef, it'll be a long road. Another champion's token here. And now our quest probably puts us on the path to Erend. Yes, it does. So let's go find Erend. And continue to move things forward here. And we'll have ourselves a quick save. Move things forward here. So, Aaron is down, I believe, the other. No, he's apparently we're being told by the quest marker to come this way. Probably still to cross the water.
So you can see the the design here, the Osram engineering. They're the only culture that's gonna going to have things like this, where this is obviously at least in part a logging camp, and this is designed to pull logs out of the water. The water wheel there, turning the mechanism that makes these chains pull. The Nora would never build anything like this. The Karja rely upon the Osram to to make things like this. The great elevators at Meridian, for example. Um, were made under contract by the Osram, and uh, the the Osram woman we met yesterday um, was actually one of the people that helped build those elevators. The Osram woman we met in a prior episode, I should say, for those of you watching on YouTube. All right, so that is a bristleback, and that is a problem. I want to override machines and where are you off to? So these are the weapon tutorials that we're going to go through. It's always something. Hold tight. I'll see what I can do. Try luring them into the trip wire. Why kill it like that? What do you think the trip wires are for? Well, you see, I have the the ability to just knock these guys down and you know, your trip wires are cool and all, and I'll use them, but I don't really want to walk toward them all that much. I don't need a trip wire to kill a scrounger. That's what I'm going to do. showed up. Tripwire's handy, but machine hunting's a youngin's game. Come on over. Let me give thanks proper like. So who are you? This gentleman, this awesome man, is named Thurlis. I see you're a practiced hunter. Took you less time to kill those scroungers than vanguards to kill one bristleback. So the vanguards came through here? Yeah, just a bit ago. Down that bristleback, headed south. But then those scroungers showed up to carve the carcass, as they do. Then another bristleback ran through. I'm telling you, it's crazy around here. So the vanguard went south? Probably. This whole valley is swarming with them. The vanguard seemed dead set on getting rid of them. I see. Hold on there, Red. If you're gonna go chasing across the daunt, you're gonna want a tripcaster. I got one. Not just any tripcaster. One of my make. Free of charge. Workmanship looks solid enough. Yep. Been tweaking the design since I left Chain Scrape. More room to tinker out here and less chance of, well, accidents. Did something happen in Chain Scrape? <laughs> well, like someone. Let me guess. Ovend. Back when I had a place in town, I took a real interest in my wares. Kept pressing for the Olven discount. Thanks to the resub I doc. No, he didn't like that so much. I can't prove it, but that chuff bucket set my workshop on fire. Felt it best to put some distance between us after that. Cable car operator told me the bristlebacks just appeared yesterday. Do you know anything about them? How is old Karn? Back in the day, me and him got into all sorts of trouble. There was this one time that... Anything about the bristlebacks? No. Karn said true. I just showed up and ran Karn, the lift operator. 
lucky for me, I've got you and the Vanguard <coughs> swooping in time to time to save my backside. <laughs> so, you said something interesting about scrappers coming along right after the Bristleback had been taken down because that's their function. The scrappers come in to break down the machines and materials to go back to what are known as cauldron facilities where machines are made. There's also things called repair bays where machines are, can go to be fixed. The scrapping, the scrappers are a resource gathering type of machine and one of many, and that is what they do. I should get going. Thanks for the trip, Caster. While oh, you're blasting bristle, Max, I think I'll head down to the hunting grounds. Did you know they have a trip caster trial? Come by later if you want to try it out. Maybe. After I get things under control. So Aaron headed south. Should be able to pick up his tracks with my focus. Alright, let's go ahead and pick up our resources here. Good morning, Doc. Sorry. I'm trying to preserve the cutscenes for the purposes of this also being posted on YouTube. Hopefully your evening last night went well, or as well as it could go. We are slowly pushing toward Erend here in the Daunt. And that Tripcaster that we were given is nothing compared to the Tinker's Pride, which is the Tripcaster that we currently have equipped. We need to make some arrows while we're in here. Anything of use. Some zip lines tied here. Couple, there's a ladder up top. Let's have a look up there very quickly. We'll see Thurlis again, and we will probably ignore his side activity. Fair enough. Fair enough, my friend. All right. Well, there's something out there causing havoc. Walk past the resource container? Yes. Up on the hill. Well, that is an acid bristleback, isn't it? Yeah. Acid won't make much of a dent. Let's get into cover so we get a stealth bonus on this thing. First tracks headed up the hill. My focus can help me find her. Turn around, big boy. Regala's Wrath. The best sharp shot bow from the base game. The ability to just do massive damage at a critical point. Oh, you want me to highlight a track so I can find Aaron? Let's see where this leads. His bristlebacks are everywhere. All right, so you continue through here, and these. Burrowers were all taken down by somebody, and then their shards were left intact on them. Oh, geez, that pig. That's a big pig. Can't climb that, really? Okay, I'll come around then, I guess. down this hill as we look for errand. There's a camp of some kind here. You know, the supposed the good thing about playing Forbidden West a year ago is the details of the intro. I don't remember all that well. Okay, obviously some bad things have happened here. 
something's going down. Sounds like someone's putting up a fight. Oh yeah. A couple acid bristlebacks here. Oh, those are scroungers. Another one down. Now this, this is what I was forced for. No ledgers to fill. No boring mid-afternoon patrols. Just a hammer. Just the fight. Aloy? Errand. Aaron expressing his disgust with being the captain of the vanguard. Just wanted to be a fighter, which is where his talent lies. Stay where you are. I'll handle the rest. Have acid canisters on their backs. It should trigger a chain reaction if I hit them with acid arrows. Or, you know, really powerful impact arrows. Anything else floating around here? Do we get them all? We got them all. Alright, before we talk to Aaron, let's go ahead and scrounge for materials here. There was some green shine back there on the hill that I saw. All in all, well handled, though. Alright, our friend Aaron, who we first met in the village of Mother's Heart in Horizon Zero Dawn, and then met again at Meridian as we began to chase down the men of the Eclipse who had attacked our proving, and the Nora in general. Aaron has been a consummate friend, though he is a, he, he did at one point have a thing for Aloy, I think he's realizing that that is not going to happen. He can be brash and a drunk, but at the same time a good man, which makes him a good character, just like any good character. He's got strengths and weaknesses, flaws and and gifts. Let's have a talk uh, with Aaron here. <laughs> Caught me at my best, as usual. Well, you did the hard part. I just took care of the stragglers. How bad is it? Uh, this ah, who needs ribs? Huh? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm good. I'm good. <sighs> okay, well, I, I know you didn't come all the way to the Daunt just to watch me get wrecked. So what's the story? I need the embassy to happen, so I can head west. Errand, what I did at the spire, what we did, it didn't end the threat. It just slowed it down. There's still more to do. Really? Well, well that's great. I, I mean, yeah, not the threat's not over part. That's not so great. But, but hey, what? Whatever you're up against, your spear, my hammer, just like old times. Erend, I need the embassy now. I can't wait for you to heal. Couple of days rest, if that. Actually. Even if you weren't hurt, what I have to do, it's... It's better if I do it alone. Alone? <laughs> ah, that figures. Oh. Aaron!
Aaron! I hate to interrupt the romance, but I'm pretty banged up here. I don't blow your blaze, I'm coming. Oh, this just keeps getting better. Huh. Listen. I'll go to Baron Light, get patched up. If you want this embassy to happen, we're gonna need this sun priest, Studius Wadis. Oh, I know him. I'll clear the Valley of Bristlebacks, then send Wadis to Baron Light. I'll catch up with you there. Well, I guess that's sort of like a goodbye. I'm sorry? You? Sorry? <laughs> Yeah, that'd be a first. Where is this coming from? Hey, just, you know, forget it, yeah. Oh, it's nothing. Good morning, diggity. It sounds like something. All right, fine. Now, after the battle at the Spire, you, you took off. You left without so much as a handshake. I mean, people like me, we fought and bled at your side, Aloy. You just, or you just disappear? What kind of person does that? So Aaron is expressing something that is actually right at the core of one of Aloy's flaws, where she's so purpose-driven that she is horrible at interpersonal relationships. And it couples in with the fact that she does have an arrogant streak. She, at this point in her life, knows that she is a more capable warrior and smarter than a lot of people. And she can be a little condescending from that regard. So... Here's Aaron saying, we, we all get rallied to you to save the world, and then we won, and then in the blink of an eye, you're gone, and we thought we were your friends. What kind of a friend does that? And so Aloy can be the person who says, I don't have time for this, Aaron, and, and that would play more into her, my purpose is more important than you. The same kind of way she handled Avad to a degree, except... She would be, uh, be, I don't know, cold about it. Or she thinks that she had no, she had a good reason. She, she think, and there's some logic to that. And I don't have time to, to work these relationships or worry about feelings. What I'm doing is more important. And that while that's true, it's, it's really, again, cold. Or she realizes that, you know, she has hurt people and, she just didn't have a choice. I don't think Aloy is that in touch with her emotions to, to really say that option. So we're not going to be mean to Erend. We're just going to go with the logical option here. Erend, I left when I did how I did for a reason. A good one. Oh, thanks for sharing. Listen to me. Life on Earth is in danger and only I can save it. What are you talking about? Exactly what I just said. Everything living is going to die unless I fix a piece of technology created by the old ones. And time's running out. Well, I. Yeah, I guess that's the reason, all right. Uh, I'm an idiot. Mm, no. Uh, Aaron! I mean, valid reasons to be yeah, upset. That's my cue. Maybe I should go with you to Baron Light. No, no, hey, you you need it elsewhere, obviously. We'll make it without you. Part of that is that doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. You'll have to handle that one on your own. We'll only slow you down. So there's some fire gleam here we can pop. Which we're going to. And then run away. Alright, that would have been useful to roll those onto the bristlebacks, I suppose, if we could have gotten there. There's a box back here. All that for a couple of metal shards seems to be overkill. Have a look up here at this box. And now we will. <clears throat> get clearer on our quest line and understand what it is we have to do next. I believe the quest line here will take us to Baron Light. Yeah, clear the daunt. So our quests are overlapping with go to the source of the explosions. That quest is taking us over there. At the same time, oops, at the same time we have 
the Bristlebacks quest, which is in the same direction. So we will stay on the main because the main will take us there and then we will pick up the Bristlebacks on the other side. So that quest. What that explosion was, we do not know. And we're going to have to go explore it on our own. And we'll meet Erend at Baron Light down the road here. He's obviously hurt. Took a shot in the ribs from a bristleback. And it, as Aloy said, she, she, she will continuously say, I am better at this alone. As she, throughout this game, will pull back and pull back and pull back and pull into the idea that the only person who understands her is Elizabeth, this you know, woman who she perceives as the closest thing she would ever have to a mother who's been dead for thousands of years because they share genetic history. Beautiful game, though. So here we have some Osram Freebooters. Freebooter is actually what are the, these Osram doing out here? They're harvesting Quick, a bristleback. Gotta scrap them before the scroungers get them. That's not good news. Oh, that bristleback's charging right at them. Oof. <laughs> Another one for the scrap pile. The freebooter. Your help was timely, Nora. Just get back to chain scrape before you get yourselves killed. To the Ostrom, a freebooter is like free on, person, privateer, mercenary. But the term freebooter actually is tied to the political term filibuster, believe it or not, uh, which derives. I think etymology from the Dutch word vrijgeiter, which literally means pirate or buccaneer. But to the Osram, the, the, the concept really means just the freedom to move around and do what they want, kind of like a it, kind of like gig worker, I think would be the modern day parallel what a freebooter is. They just kind of pick up and do what they do wherever they want. Not really tied to a, a, a working job boss or a contract or anything like that. We're okay. We didn't get acid on our, anything but our soles of our boots there, Aloy. Alright, something is obviously going down here too. Okay. What a shot that was. One less machine. Alright, where are the rest of them? There they are. Ah, ah, look at that thing drop! Another one down. My guy's tank and just didn't kill it. Remember to clonk that follow button. Happy Sunday, Stern. Here we go. Going down. One less machine. That had blaze on the back. Another one down. Where's this last one out there? This, I think it's the last one. Ah, ah, look at that thing. There, Corey safe. This was the source of the explosions. We got talk. Once we loot everything, the video itself is at 44 minutes, sir, for the first episode or episode four today, as we continue our story. We're going to get our spoils first, though, because the Bristleback has a part which is critical. What up, Rocket? The Bristleback has a part which is critical to the arrows. We like to use these piercing spikes. And 
Might as well grab the police. Alright, so we've rescued these workers. Let's see what she has to say. Meet Belna. I don't know what Anora's doing out here, but consider yourself old. We tried to hold off and wait for the vanguard, but one of them bristlebacks charged us. Next thing you know was a full-fledged fracas. Is everyone okay? We lost some good people. But we would have lost the whole quarry without you. Well, at least it's quiet now. Your ears ought to be ringing with a quarry at work. But Chain Scrape's whistle ain't blowing, so we're stuck picking up the pieces. You need the whistle to get back to work? Me and my crew were just little cogs out here. Can't lift a hammer till Olwen blows that thing. Because if we work without his say-so, he'll ban us. And my people have been through enough. Olwen holds that much power? He's got the money and connections to snuff our fires for good. Almost feels like we stood a better chance with the bristlebacks. Indeed. So you're learning that Olvind, through connections, cannot only ruin the Osram workers' lives here, but maybe within Osram culture, which is why they're scared of him. What are you and your crew working on? We're supposed to be working Olvind's claim, <clears throat> digging out stone to show our barren light. But the work stoppage and the bristlebacks cut us short. Never seen those blasted things in a dawn before. Where in Forge Fire did they come from? I'm not sure. At least not yet. Yes, yeah, I'm a little congested today, but it was a matter of I was awake and ready to go and wanted to continue to move forward and get some uh, some more episodes recorded. So I decided to stream. All right. I need to get going. Stay safe. Thanks to you, that might actually be possible today. See back in the distance back there, there are some more bristlebacks tossing We've around. Out most of the bristlebacks. Chain scraping it back to work now. I'll go give Olvent the good news. What is too. I don't think that that's what's going to happen, but we still have a side quest here with the bristlebacks. We're going to maybe this embassy can finally continue happen. to press that question up the hill here because we're close enough to it. Yeah, good to see you too, Sturm. <clears throat> I just need to make a, uh, a regular regular thing of taking a break at the, uh, the top of the hour and keeping the pacing correct, but yep, we're going to play for a little Jared while. said the bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry. I should see if there's anything in the back of the valley. We don't need any rocks. I think we have plenty of rocks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we have 45 rocks. We don't need any rocks. Um, let's leave it there for now. So if I accident accidentally hit that button, we're not wasting a resource. Dead bristleback by the falls. Gotta check it out. It's strange. Parts of it have been tampered with. Almost like an override. Oh, never getting it again. <laughs> Good morning, Mads. Yes, 45 rocks seems like way too, way too many rocks for someone not building a wall. Most of those rocks were picked up accidentally as I walked around the, the first playthrough and was like, well, what's that in the ground? I'll pick that up. But yes, I don't need that many. But I probably will never come into a situation where I say, I really wish I had a rock right now. It's interesting to see that this is almost like a like a hot air. You can see the steam coming off the water as it goes over and into this beautifully constructed gorge of a valley.
So we're up here looking around at this point. No, oh, it's 127 meters behind us, actually. We are supposed to be searching west of the quarry. Examine the bristleback carcass, which I thought while we walked past it, I thought scanning it with my focus would be good enough, but apparently it wasn't. So we'll walk back down and have a closer look at that carcass. The thing that Aloy mentioned about it, which is troubling, is that it looked it had looked like it had been tampered with as if it you know almost like an override which is what she does to machines but also what the eclipse did to machines and the eclipse were taught how to do it by silence looks like a dart on impact maybe it charged off the cliff up there i better keep following the trail up my weekend is going well. Just uh, relaxing and getting ready to go back to work. And the idea that this time it was only two days off instead of, you know, 20 almost. But we'll work a week this week. I'll give my staff a, a shorter Friday due to the, the uh, Martin Luther King Day observance the fall of this coming weekend. And then we'll have a three-day weekend next weekend. But up the hill we go to figure out why this bristleback may have charged itself off the hill. An old mine. And a lot of broken trees. It's like a stampede went through. Is this where the bristlebacks came from? Like a stampede of bristlebacks, maybe? Yeah. Unless this cave leads out of the dome. So Aloy is theorizing that the Bristlebacks who just suddenly and recently appeared in the Daunt perhaps came through this cave. So let's go have a look and see if she's right. Obviously another mine of Osram design and that's not what you want to see as you walk into a mine, a bunch of rocks falling. Okay. Let's see where this leads. Mads, you shouldn't steal from your friends. Shame. Stealing from your friends Shame. is bad. Shame, Shame on you. The old cart tracks collapsed. It looks recent. Guess I'm not going that way. We are not going that way. A convenient side path is here, though, for us to take. <laughs> you never do, Mads. There's smoke from deeper in the mine. An explosion? Love that bow. Okay. Better take a look at where the smoke's coming from. So there were bristlebacks in here, which means that her theory looks to be correct. Those are the last of those arrows I can craft until I find some volatile sludge or I find a stash box. Which will alter approaches to things here. But the bristlebacks are by far the biggest concern right now. Let's go down and scavenge those, but let's get off of that bow. In case something pops out of the ground here on us or something.
There's a dead bristleback. That one is not one we killed. Some metal bite. Oh, is this the one we killed? Yes. <laughs> All right. So up the ramp we go. We we'll have a deeper look here. A box of someone else's stuff. There's a lot of smoke. It looks like mine runs pretty far back. That is a lot of blaze. I don't know if it's worth it for a green box to step in there. We are obviously not going any further that way. Those tracks must have collapsed these tracks too. Treasure vault. Mr. Land Diggity goes to the vault. Nope. to Oakland. Looks like this mine was supposed to be shut down. We must have gotten greedy. Kept blasting deeper into the mountain. I should let Javad know what I found. So it looks like our dear friend Olvind got greedy in his mine. His mine and wanted to dive deeper into this place. And as a course of his blasting Opened up a path for the Bristlebacks to get into the Daunt, and then tried to blame the Karja for it. Yeah, you tried, Diggity. Good job. So now, we will head back to Chain Scrape. Because we do... We do need to get... Studious Vadis moving. And he will only begin to move Explosions blew away open. But from where? once the bristlebacks are cleared, which we've largely done now. <laughs> it seems like it didn't try very hard. So we will get out of what is obviously a rapidly collapsing mine. And we have to get back to Chain Scrape. So what we will do is we will pause here. Take a break for myself. Stand up and walk around. We will cut the recording here on the episode and begin a new one when we come back. I encourage you all. Thank you for hanging out with me this morning. If you have been and those of you watching on YouTube, thank you as well. Um, but stand up, get a drink, and use a restroom. If you are continuing on with us here live or if you're going to continue watching on YouTube and I'll be right back. <laughs> 